there's a chair. I shall sit in the chair. Are you Vanna White in the chair? <laughs> Hi guys, Tiffany here. That's me. Don't forget it. <laughs> Don't forget it. Welcome to my quilting life. Today's Sunday. Where we sew on a Sunday because that's what Sew Sunday is all about. It's getting <laughs> you guys to sew Sundays with me here right now. <laughs> Just messing. So, what are we up to? Well, we're still on the saga of the always chasing rainbows quilt. Notice I've drug this out. I hate dragging out quilts, but I mean, I can't just do it all in one video and I don't like to do it off video because if you're following along on video isn't it nice to have the video still for you to do it so <laughs> just know that that's what we are doing today now we are building the rest of the quilt we already made our rows which are the colorful things in here and now it's time to put it all together and create a quilt a quilt top that is because it'll probably hang in the closet for a while and I probably won't get to it. Or maybe not. Maybe I will. You never know. Let's see who's all here, Mr. Scooty. He's a scrolling to the top for me. He's a prepping. Okay. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. All right. We've got Katie here, Robin, Judy, Lisa, Farouk, Glenda. Uh, J.K., Geraldine, Frank, Melody, Diana, Mary, Tracy, Cindy, Donna, uh, Teresa Louise, Tracy, Terry. I think I already said Terry, but that one's a high, so I guess it's, there's another Terry. Brenda, Debbie, Jody, Linda, Linda. Linda, wow, there's like four Lindas already. Look at that. Toby, Malena, and many, many, many more. Welcome. And if I didn't say your name, hello. Hope you're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can you tell I'm just in a funny mood today? All right. So we're going to get to this pattern. The pattern itself says, because it's free and I can give you the measurements, on the white, we didn't pre-cut everything out. Like you, sometimes when I follow someone else's pattern, I, I cut all the pieces from all the fabric. But since I've changed my mind about doing these uh, cornerstone squares, but they're top stones and bottom stones, there's nothing even on the side. I changed my mind. I'm not going to do that. I'm doing my own thing. So off camera, I cut the rest of my fabric, which is right here in this beautiful rainbow into four and a half inch squares. And I'm kind of just going to rainbow around the things. So I'm just going to do the rainbow order over and over and over until I get all the way around the whole quilt. Because there's only four pieces. What I got from the scraps, I was only able to get one more strip that was four and a half. This was almost four and a half. It is literally like four inches. <laughs> a half an inch more of fabric and it would have had plenty to do all the colors properly all the way around. But whatever it's my quilt i can do whatever i want with it which your quilt do whatever you want with it so we're just gonna rainbow it all the way around because I, there's a lot of red that stops at the top and bottom the way these rows came out so it's going to be kind of hard to get that many reds to start across the whole top because there's not enough of them so when it comes to going across the top and bottom and stuff it just only goes like red, orange, yellow, green, or something like that. So, are you going to do a small border of white before you start? Yes, colors? we are going to work on the white right now. We're actually going to put the sashing between the blocks, and it says to cut uh, 10 two and a half inch strips by width of fabric. Six of them are for the sashing. And then two more two and a half inch strips towards something else, which that's for if you're whatever. I'm just going to go ahead and cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I'm going to cut twelve, thirteen. I'm going to cut thirteen two and a half inch strips because I'm doing solid. No, I'm not. No, actually, I only need twelve then. This says it's 64, and that makes more than 64. 
Yeah, I'm just going to cut 12 two and a half inch strips and go around this thing. I'm going to move my stuff out of the way though so that I can properly cut the fabric. Did you get your crossbody bag finished? Yeah, my crossbody bag's been finished. Yes. Been done. Oh, it's way over there. My Tula bag, is that what whoever's talking about? That's been done. It was in an update video. Um, Sky's going to show my crossbody. Well, well I guess I'm, I'm going to show it. it. To you. You my show Tula it. crossbody bag. This was, uh, I put it in a video two Mondays ago. So that was from the challenge on Ian's channel. It's covered in thread because, you know, this room is covered with thread. But it's super adorable. All right. I'm going to go ahead now and find me a ruler. And you can, this fabric has been folded so long. All right. I'm just going to grab this one only because I really want to do this quickly like and be done. So I'm going to line this up almost on a line. Straighten this fabric back out again because it's been folded in a box and got all wonky. Oh, no, it's fine. I'm just going to be moving around the table real quick. I'm coming on the back side of the table so I can cut right-handed with my right-handed rotary cutter as I throw fabric on the floor. All right, I'm going to cut two and a half inch strips. What did I say, 12 of them? Yeah, 12 of them. Oh, I didn't cut that very straight, Mr. Scotty. You should have said something. You should have been like, Tiffy, that's wrong. Stop. Don't move. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's so wonky. Like, my ruler ended up getting off. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Two and a half inch strips. We're cutting two at a time because I have my fabric folded in half and on itself twice. So it's folded on top of itself. All right, so two. I'm having a hard time lining up that ruler. Four. Come on. Put it on there. On there. Six. And this will leave me plenty of fabric, I think, to do anything else if I decide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, two more. Eleven and twelve right here. Yeah. Yeah, we saw the eclipse yesterday. I came outside. I didn't remember that there was an eclipse. So I was outside, you know, doing my thing, hanging out outside, and the we keep the doors and windows open when it's really nice. It was like 72 degrees or something like that, so it allowed airflow. Anyways, I went out there, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, my eyes must be, because my eyes have been getting really blurry lately, like super bothering me. And so I'm sitting out there, and I'm like, wow, my eyes must be really bad. And I saw so I yell into the door, Scott, can you come outside? I need you to look at something. He comes outside and I was like, is it really blurry out here or like dull seeming? And he's like, yeah, it is. Like one of those end of the movie or end of the world movies, you know, where it's dreary and getting dark. <laughs> and I'm like, it is, isn't it then? And I'm looking up at the sun like you can't really look at the sun, right? <laughs> so I'm like what the heck is the sun going dead? The birds are still chirping. Everything should be fine, right? <laughs> so he goes inside eventually and I go on my phone and I look and I'm like, oh, it's the eclipse, the solar eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> I had looked it up like two weeks ago too and I totally forgot. So I just took out my camera and I took a couple pictures just so that I could Cell phones don't take the greatest pictures of eclipses, like, at all. You need a special lens and so on and so forth. But I just took a couple pictures anyway, and it, you could see the moon creating the beam, you know, of light dulling the sky. So, yeah, there was that. <laughs> but we saw it. Well, what we could see, I put on two pairs of sunglasses even to take pictures of it because I couldn't even see my camera. It was blinding. 
And two pairs of sunglasses do not look at eclipses. Just forewarning you guys. Make sure you wear eclipse sunglasses or the eclipse glasses, you know, that are specially for that kind of stuff. Or look through a welding mask because that's the same exact thing. Okay. Have you tried the stripology ruler? Um, I have a strip. Uh, I don't know if it's stripology brand. Let's see what brand it is. It is the Stripology Ruler Creative it? Grids. I have not used it yet. I bought it, and it's just been sitting under here because I haven't had strips to cut till just now. <laughs> so, yeah, I have one. I just haven't used it yet. It's brand new. So, I've been little by little buying myself things that I know that sooner or later I will eventually get to using. And I put it right here with my big rulery stuff so that I can remember. But did I remember? No. <laughs> so you have one, you just haven't used it. Yep, have one, just haven't used it. All right, so I'm going to next cut the selvages off of these. It's a batik. It's white batik, so uh, plain white batik, so it's really easy to just get the selvages off because there's no writing or anything, so it's literally right. The selvage on a batik is literally like not even a half an inch. It's usually pretty, really, pretty, really, really small. Oops, that's the trash over there. But you'll love it. All right, so I'm going to sew these in sets of two. So I already have two together. I'm just going to take the two middle pieces and sew them right side together. And that's how I know that that's right side out. Because, you know, that's a smart way of doing things. I'm also going to make sure that I have a good stitch length because I was sewing. Um, what did I sew yesterday? A pillow. I made a pillow yesterday. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. Well, I don't know if you want to leave right now, but, you know, check it out. It's uh, yesterday's live stream, the random live stream. Usually I don't go live on Saturdays, but I did, and that's what we did. And you get to meet my son, even though he's been on camera before, and my soon-to-be daughter-in-law. And then you get to see Thumper, who's been lazy, lazy, lazy today, so you probably won't even see him today, because he is hiding for some reason. He hasn't even come out for food. He's just being weird. He's been lazy since he's had his new food bag. Yeah, his what new food it? bag. He doesn't want to eat the new food. He's like, no, please don't change it on me. I'm pretty sure you all have pets that don't like their food changed either. But well, yeah, unfortunately, it was just a new bag. same food, new bag. He doesn't like he it. Loved, when he wanted stuff. his old bag back. <laughs> He's so weird. He's such a picky kitty. All right. And then I'm going to sew these together as well. Because they all need to be in sets of two. Every single one of them. And then whatever's left over, I'll do whatever with. But I might have to cut more strips. You never know. Again, I'm just kind of winging it at this point. Because I'm doing the sashing, which is two strips put together anyway. And then I'm doing all the way around the whole thing instead of cut it, sub cutting into those eight and a half inch pieces like the pattern says. It's just going to be solid strips. All right. Snippy, snippy. Get all these snipped apart. I'm just going to finger press them and then I'm going to start grabbing my rows in order and stitching one of these sets to uh, one side of one, hook two to one, one side of two, hook two, three to two, and so on and so forth. Oh, I should move these though before I get them all mixed up, my beautiful rainbow array of color. All right, so here's my strip units. We're going to use these, move that, slide that over, and we're going to take row one, because I didn't get anything out of order. I'm going to take row one and put it right sides together with my white fabric, and I'm going to sew this on and then move on to the next, and so on and so forth, with a quarter inch seam. I'm also uh, back stitching at the top, probably at the bottom too. I'm not pulling or tugging, I'm just laying it on here. I really don't feel like pinning. 
sewing with my quarter inch seam allowance. I can see through the white fabric so I can see where my quarter inch is when the two pieces come together. That lip that's right there, that's usually a quarter inch or at least it should be or thereabouts because, you know, I'm not perfect and I tell you guys this all the time. A piecing is just as imperfect as yours. I strive myself on just getting it done, not worrying about anything else. Still going down. So if I lose points, oh well, because really I don't care. Once I quilt it, you're going to never know because sometimes I go a little heavy on the quilting. And this one, I might have some fun with the quilting. Huh? Oh, it, the noise is from going over the seams because I have this kind of low, actually, because I was sewing the soap yesterday. Do you think it matters whether you put the sashing on the top or the bottom? Um, no, it probably wouldn't matter, but I'm going to do it anyway to separate uh, just as wide as the sides will be. Having a sashing, I mean a strip on the top and bottom. Oh, yeah, sorry. The whole, I don't hear the whole question sometimes, Mr. Scotty. All right, so I cut that off. I'm just going to set that aside for use with whatever I do. All right, now I'm just going to finger press this lovely thing towards the white or towards my sashing strip because it'll lay better that way. And since mine is all batik, even the background fabric, it presses nicely and we don't really need to go to the iron just yet. And I use my fingernail, sometimes the pad of my finger, but the problem with using the pad of my finger is uh, I have sensory issues from having MS. So then it feels weird on my fingers and then it makes my finger get all numb and tingly and annoyed. <laughs> so, all right. The sashing, I'm putting the sashing in between every strip right now. Yes, but would it matter if you put the top and bottom? I'm not putting it on the top and bottom until after the centers of the sashing are together. I'm putting all the pieces together first, and then I'll do the top and bottom and sides. So now I'm going to take row two, right sides together, attach it on. And I'm going to back stitch at the top. When you sew the sashing to the arrows, does it matter which is on top? When I sew it to the arrows, does it matter which one is on top? Yes, because the pattern is a certain direction. So one row is facing with the point up, one is facing with the point down, the next is up, the next is down, and the last is up. So it matters which way they go, yes. And I'm just laying it on top of here. I'm not pulling or tugging anything. Just laying it on here. And it should match with the bottom. Um, not really. I'm sewing with the piece on top because I'm kind of just going in a from start to finish instead of putting a sashing between all of them and then putting them together. I'm just sewing them like you would strips, I guess. Trying to make sure everything stays in the way I've it's got it pressed. That way it lays flat, and then those two ends should be exactly the same size. So I'm just gonna lay them on top. Continue on the way down. 
back stitch and then I'm going to come back to the top and I'm going to finger press this again towards the sashing. So I'm going to push it toward the sashing. Oops, and then I thread came through. I try to get these before they get to the long arm. The threads that poke through the seams because I had started with a really long piece of thread or something. There's another one. Look at that. That's what I have from threads just randomly poking through. When I do quilt this quilt, I do want to make sure that I use a white batting because if you put a cream batting behind a quilt that's this white of a background you're going to have uh, a duller look so it's going to change it from white to off-white so just remember when you go to quilt quilts like this with this super white background fabric to make sure that you use white 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 batting so bleached cotton batting i think they even make a bleached um 80 20 and they also you can use the uh, polyester batting too but just know that with polyester batting behind white white fabric like this um, you'll still see your puff which you get from polyester but the if you use one of the thinner weight polyesters under four ounces you're going to see straight through your quilt if your backing fabric is not very dark you'll see right through it sun in the light of the house and everything and it just looked like stained glass just some extra tips for you guys if you're, you know, using white fabrics like this and new to quilting and don't know. Sounds like I'm getting low on my bobbin. It's the same bobbin that I ended with last night. So, yep, it's out. <laughs> See, I know my sound of my machine. It's so good to know the you? sound I've of the machine. I've been saying it for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear you say it. I did. I said oh. Machines make noise. You hit a noise. Oh, you no, you going over, over the seams. That's the weird sound you're the hearing. Noise. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Scott hears it too. All right. I'm just going to continue where I ended. I'm going to pluck that long thread before it ends up in the middle of the seam because that's what happens when it sticks out the front. I'm going to make sure it's pulled to the back. Back stitch. Since it's a batik, I'm definitely trying to stitch in my previous stitching marks from when I ran out of thread because those holes don't like to go away very easily. Once it's on my table, I'm going to fold it on top of itself, line it up with the edge of the quilt pieces, and I'm going to go ahead and just cut it away and then add this to my pile. Of in case I need more strips. If you accidentally put your batting in upside down, can you still pull it that way? Yeah, it, it's not. Uh, oh, look at this. See, <laughs> I'm playing thread chicken, guys. Um, if you put your batting in upside down and your little pokies aren't facing the back when your needle is poking through, it's no big deal, honestly. Uh, the like maybe one of the chances you might take and, and I don't know this because I've never paid attention to the needle's dullness, but maybe it'll dull the needle a little bit more or quicker. But honestly, I wouldn't know because I use the same needle for the whole entire project on the long arm. So, and I can't tell if it's duller or not, honestly, but if it goes in upside down, oh well. Who's gonna know? 
nobody really, you know, you just open the package and lay it on the quilt. When I was a beginner, I didn't know. But as soon as I started long arm quilting and I found that, you know, things quilted so much easier if the pokey holes were faced down, you know, the rougher side of the batting, per se, <laughs> um, then, yeah, I had more enjoyable quilting experience. How about that? That works. That's a word to use. All right, so I'm just finger pressing it again towards the sashing. Then we're going to grab row number three and sew that on. Because again, I'm just doing it as if it was just long strips, one right after the other. I'm trying to keep them in order. That's why I left the little things on them so that they stay in order. Okay, I'm going to start with a back stitch. And then I'm just going to lay it on top of here without stretching or pulling. I'm trying to keep it flat on my lap because it is getting a little bit bigger. It's not annoyingly bigger, but it is a little bit bigger. This is not an annoying size quilt though, so it's only a lap size. It's kind of hard to monitor that thread at the same time because this is a high speed machine. Well, it would be nice if I was having a quarter inch seam allowance there. Do it again. Look at the quilt, not at the thread. <laughs> Making sure that my ends are together. All right, and now I'm going to finger press towards the sashing. Towards the session. I have a wood press as well that I can use when my finger starts getting tired. Now for another two set of sashing, we're going to make sure that it's right sides together by making sure, because it's white, I'm going to make sure that my seam is facing up towards me. That way I know that I'm sewing right sides together. Don't you just hate it when you start sewing and sewing and you're getting there and you get to the seam and you're like, darn it, <laughs> it's backwards because you put it on not right sides together. <laughs> I've done that several times. And instead of unpicking it, I only unpick that section and then just re-sew the seam the opposite direction. And then continue on. Because, <laughs> yeah, I've done it several times. It happens when you use uh, solid fabrics. Because there really is no right or wrong side of a solid. The pattern does say to subcut these to the 64 inches, your sashing pieces, because that's the, the length of the um, strips. 
yeah, 64 and a half inches, it says in the pattern. So that's up to you if you want to pre-cut these to size. But I just leave them together and cut them this way. I've never really had a wonky bowing problem from doing this. I'm trying to use that whole spool of thread, guys. That's why I'm really haven't switched yet. No, it's fine. I can do both. As long as I keep my head facing this way and just know where my fingers are that way, I should be good. As soon as I see it going up, <laughs> I will use this whole spool. All right, I'm at the end. I'm going to fold it on top of itself, create a crease right here, lining up the two sides. And I'm lining up the sides as well. So the strip itself is being lined up. That way I know I'm getting a nice straight cut down here at the bottom. I'm going to take this and lay it over there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and finger press this towards the sashing, and then we have two more to do. So we're gonna add the next one and then one more sashing. Watching the magic thread. <laughs> yeah. The magic thread. Will it last for this next long seam? Pretty sure. We'll see. It looks like enough for this next long seam. All right, so I'm going to take row four now and lay this on here. Line up the top. I'm going to sew it just a smidge before I go down into my lap and line up that bottom section. All right, so now I'm just gonna kind of come back here, get this all lined up on there. Again, it should be exactly the same size. Oops, don't let that go. <laughs> I've had the spools come off completely at the top and get stuck right here and the, the spool thing stuck on the end of the juki uh, of the thread guide. <laughs> How wide is each strip? Uh, eight and a half inches. At least. I think so. That's what the pattern says. Yep, eight and a half. They are eight and a half inches. Each strip. And the length is 64 and a half, I think is what I said, yes. When they're all put together. On. I want to get the best of all. I don't want to waste any thread. <laughs> I don't like to waste anything. Do you have any ideas on how to quilt it yet? I have no ideas on how to quilt it yet. I don't think that far in advance. I definitely don't think that far in advance. 
sometimes with little quilts I do, like little wall hangings and stuff, I kind of like, oh, hey, I'm going to do this. Or, or I think to myself, oh, I want to try this stitch or I want to try that stitch or, you know, something like that. This thread chicken thing is so funny. I never do that on camera. I usually use the a, a fresh spool, but today, <laughs> no fresh spool. Look, it landed that whole strip. Will it do a whole stashing next? Because <laughs> that's what's next is the sashing. Maybe it will last a whole sashing. They're traveling and I forgot my thread bender for my big spool. Anything else I can use? You can put it in a coffee cup. And then obviously run it up your thing. It depends on um, your machine. If you have one of those machines where you have to lift the top like my other Juki and it, the spool thing sits on the side, um, you can use a coffee cup and maybe run it around that. Uh, I've done a couple weird things in the past with the spool holders, you know, because I didn't have one, but I needed to use the bigger spool because that's what I had. Another strip. Okay, will this thread spool last for this one? <laughs> Still going strong. Look at that yeah. sucker. <laughs> oh, no. Where'd it go? It went far. You need hand. Oh, I was going to come find it. You got it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gonna do it <laughs> do you use cotton or polyester thread to piece i use cotton to piece but there's nothing wrong with using polyester to piece as well Both. yeah um i right now have been using because i got a ton of it i bought a ton um essential thread from connecting threads it's 100 percent cotton 50 Ooh. weight three pot three ply thread i bought a ton of it so i literally have scott put a link in i literally have all these brand new spools right here at this end from here over of white and gray for all my projects because it was a good sale oh come on get in the Oh. Hey. Okay. Why isn't it going back in? I will do it. Okay. I can't get it back in. Anyways, I bought a ton of it because it was on sale. So it. just watch for the sales and when they do happen, buy a ton. <laughs> so far, this spool that I'm working on, I've made this whole entire quilt so far from it. And I have. Um, a couple other quilts that I've done with this spool, so just know that they last a while. On the long arm, on the other hand, if this kind of spool was on the long arm, it would be gone quick. But for piecing, it's lasting. Oh, we're getting close now. I can see this thing. Still going. It's still it's going. It. it might make it to the end. A good sale price is like two fifty a stool. <laughs> Just stay. Just stay. That's all I ask of you.
you just put your thing no 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 just yeah you just put your fingers on each side of it because it'll start getting the less thread that's on the spool the looser it is the looser it is the the looser the tension down? comes through all right so i'm on here it lasted a whole entire one because you can't hold the spool down oh uh, hold on We'll get it. Just hold it away from me. I am. Just don't hold too tight, though. All right, that's cut. I'm gonna stick this over there with the rest of my strips. All right, another. Let's see how much more we can go. I'm literally using all the thread. <laughs> <laughs> you find a rainbow thread you like? Uh, no, I have not. I haven't actually been looking. Everybody's sent a lot of people. A lot of people have sent me links to rainbow threads. Um, most of them are smaller spools. Uh, I don't hook the smaller spools up on my long arm because it goes so fast and I quilt so fast. It's best to use the big giant spool, and I use the what is it? Five fifty-five hundred yard spools. And you guys, a lot of you have been sending me like thousand yard spools. I don't know if you noticed that in the ads, but yeah, I can't put those on the long arm because they go flying just like this spool, spool is trying to go <laughs> on the long arm. They really go flying. You should see it. <laughs> it's a crazy experience when it happens. What's the name of the wooden seam smoother presser? And this, is this available? is a finger presser that I got from T over at T Quilt. So if you just do explanation T Quilt, that it'll take you to her Facebook page. She does have a website which is linked on her Facebook page, or you can just go to www.tquilts.com and tell her that Tiffany sent you. But they make this. She sells these and she sells the seam ripper and stiletto combo. Uh, and there's all different sorts of colors of wood. I have the passion purple, I think is what it's called, but they have tons of other ones. I wouldn't put that with the sharp thing. Sticking nope, out. I keep it with the sharp thing sticky out. Okay. You just don't ever touch it. Okay. I never go from above, I always go from over. Okay. So I don't poke myself. I was feeling uncomfortable with it, but okay. I haven't hurt myself yet. Okay. That one day you do. Now, now that I said yet, out loud. All right, so I'm gonna continue on. So a little bit, I'm gonna come down here. Let's open the whole strip up. Match it up at the bottom which it matches perfectly fine. Just line it up. And so. He's actually, Scott is over there holding the spool away from me <laughs> so for the person that asks what can you do because you forgot your extra spool stand just give the spool to your husband <laughs> he can hold it with one hand and the spool with the other hold the because <laughs> that's what scott's doing <laughs> it's super funny <laughs> or if you have a grandkid <laughs> I know it's, it's funny though. <laughs> What's your favorite free motion thread? Uh, My favorite free motion thread is that what you said? Yeah. I like using glide. I use it on my long arm, and when I did quilt on my juki here, this not this exact one, but the other one, um, I used glide for that as well. I mean, I have used lots of other brands, but. Uh, I've always been buying Glide at my local quilt shop, which Scott's put a link in. Okay, 
All right, that's it. We're out of thread. Ta da! <laughs> I'm going to tie it to this new spool that I put over here. I'm going to pull it through so I don't have to rethread the machine. You guys know you can do that, right? Tie the thread to the previous thread. Grab your thread. Same thing I do on a long arm. Pull it through, and now I have threaded my machine. I just need to run it through the thread hole because usually my knots don't go through the needle. But other than that, it's already threaded now. Look at that. I didn't have to hassle wrapping it around anything. All right, on to a new spool, and it lasted for all those pieces. Now to do the two sides, the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to go ahead and finger press this now to the sashing. And then I'm going to, I always do the sides and then the top and then the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do. Same as I always do, sides, top, bottom. And then we're going to piece the rainbow around it. We're going to taste the rainbow. Yum. <laughs> Actually, I could have said, we're going to chase the rainbow, because it's always chasing rainbows. Get it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, earlier. Don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> I was singing that. <laughs> because Scott said that. What's the pattern you're working on? Is it don't go chasing waterfalls? I just started singing, don't go chasing waterfalls. Yep. <laughs> oh, now it's going to be stuck in my head even longer. And in all of yours. <laughs> we have fun here, Tippy Quilty Life. <laughs> Don't go chasing waterfalls. Please stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. I know that you're going to have to go with nothing at all. But I think we're moving too fast. <laughs> Okay, is it stuck in everyone's head now? <laughs> I don't know the rap part, so don't ask me to sing that. Because <laughs> that's what comes next. I don't even know if I could sing that fast. What's that movie? RV, the RV movie? Uh, it's like a family vacation or something like that. Family vacation. It's not the RV movie, that's the one with Robin Williams. This is the one There's... with Jennifer Aniston and uh, the other guy. Yeah, uh, the, the, what's his last name? B, B, I can't think of it either. Jason Bateman. No, it's not him. Who is it? It's the other guy. What's his name? God, think of it. God, think of it. There's an RV movie, and the kid in the movie actually sings the song, and he raps to it and everything. Absolutely hilarious. It's called We're the Millers. We're the Millers. That's what it's called. If you guys haven't seen it yet, that is... <laughs> A super Jason funny Sudeikis. movie. Yeah, Jason Sudeikis and Jennifer Aniston have a fake family and travel travel down to Mexico to take over for a drug cartel or whatever. And it all goes funny. The kid gets bitten. He sings songs. <laughs> yeah, just so many funny things. Super hilarious. Okay, enough with promoting the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get back to the movie. <laughs> It's okay to talk about funny movies. Oh, yeah, I'm not mad at that. We used to talk about movies all the time because they'd ask us what movie. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep, Sunday night used to be our movie night. Now we watch movies um, whenever, throughout the day, throughout the week, while I'm watching other live streams. <laughs> When Becca is on on Friday night, sometimes I'm watching a movie yeah. and watching Becca at the same time. We don't have the daycare no more, so we have more time. Yeah, we have a lot more time on our hands to catch up on movies. All right, so I'm coming down to the end of this one. I'm going to go ahead and turn the whole thing around. Actually, let me press it towards that fabric first, then turn it around. Because why not piece a whole entire quilt top the rest of the way together without ironing? I mean, isn't that like the easiest way to do things? <laughs> okay. 
now turn it to the other side. And I could probably take those clips off of it now because I really don't need them anymore. All right, we're going to attach this final strip. Find that seam. And then those other strips, I'm going to connect those together and that'll be the top and bottom. Look at that. And then we'll start piecing the rainbow. Video ended? No. Oh. You want mine? It's right there. I brought it I in here. It. Scott and computers don't mix, so if he's not answering questions at the moment, it's because somehow, some way, he messed up his computer. <laughs> Take these clips off of here because now it really doesn't matter what the row numbers are. Where did that go? Oh. Hey, cockroach, where are you going to? Cockroach is trying to take a stroll as well. Cockroach is my mascot from Ian. He sits here on my machine and hangs out with me. Oh, these don't go in here. Oh, what am I trying to do? These go on the other thing. So we'll just stick those over there. Okay. Now, did I finger press that back? No, I did not. Finger press that back. I'm going to add to the top and bottom. Is it working? Okay. All right, so now I'm going to piece these pieces together because I don't want them to go to waste. And I'm going to do three for the top and three for the bottom. And then I shall have enough. And I've never been one to care about how many seams are in my borders. I don't know if you guys, uh, any of you out there, you know, like have to have two seams in the top and or one seam. I never really cared. All right. together. I've never, never cared about any of that. I do not like, though, when a seam lands at the edge. Like, you go to sew it, and you're sewing it on, and the seam lands, like, right here at the edge. I don't like that. So I like to make sure before I sew it on that it's not landing at the edge. Oh, one of these is going to go to this guy. And to the other one. This one and put this last piece 
on that. And look at that, three and three. And that should be plenty. Snip it all apart. So here's one for the top, one for the bottom. We're gonna see how this is gonna land. Because like I said, I really don't like when a seam lands at the edge. Right sides together. Go from one side to the other and see. It doesn't actually say what the measurement this way is before you do it because it's got the eight and a half inch pieces between it. Oh, look at that. See, it's not exactly at the end. Perfect. I can even start it up a little like this. So that's not exactly at the, near the end at all. And I'll cut that off after the fact. Okay, so I'm going to sew my top and bottom on. And I didn't even finger press those seams. I'm just going to put them one way or the other. One way or another. That's the way the seam is going to go. It's going to get you. It's going to get you, get you, get you. It's going to get you, get you, get you, get you. See, 12 strips go all the way around. And the and the actual pattern, you would just be subcutting these other pieces. It says to subcut two strips, but why not just subcut these strips into eight and a half inch strips, you know? Like, yeah. All about saving fabric. All right, so I'm at the end. I'm just gonna fold it on top of itself, cut off the excess. I can get it in the slot. There we go. I don't need that piece now. I'm going to come to this top part. Now I'm going to fold that and subcut that off of the ear. Ta da! Now I can finger press it. Oops, I threw that kind of far. What are the alphabet stickers you use on your clips and where can you get them? The alphabet stickers on my clips are called, I forgot, let me find it. Yeah, well I got them too now from different companies. Where did I stick them? I thought I stuck them right here on top, but I guess not. They're alphabet organizers or whatever, something organizers. From GE Designs. Here we go. You can find them at Fat Quarter Shop. They're G E Z G E Designs little organizing stickers. Fat Quarter Shop has them. And they're not just for the small ones, they're also for the big clips as well. So they have the big clip ones, you know, the letters and stuff on it, and then they have the small clip ones. So that's what they are. I think it's better, honestly, like I've had lots of different ways to uh, put markings on, on my quilts. I was like pinning, I, you know, put a pin and a sticky note, but I was going through a lot of sticky notes. I was going back and forth to the dollar store, always buying sticky notes every time I was at the dollar store because I went through a lot of them. And honestly, having them on the clips now, way easier. I don't need any other alphabeties or any of the other stuff that they have out there for quilting and marking things i think because the alphabeties you still have to clip on or pin on you know so why not just have it on your clip you know they also make uh alphabet pins as well all right one side is on let's turn it to the other and then we'll take a look at the quilt before we add 
the borders because this is the way it would end, but with just those colorful strips on there. So I'm again just going to come up here. I know that it's going to sur surpass where I need it to be, so I'm just going to start it a little bit beyond. Back stitch. And even while it's right here, I could actually cut that off by folding it onto itself. I could see where that edge is and then make sure everything's aligned. Put my scissors in there and snip. And now it's pre-cut off, so I don't have to do it after the fact. I mean, it's however you want to do it. You can measure it and cut it to size. And not do it the way I do, but again, I'm a lazy quilter, so I do things the lazy way. As long as it's sewn together and the stitches are staying, uh, I really don't care <laughs> how anything ends up. The only time I actually, you know, give a crap about anything is when I make a show quilt and then I'm particular about every part of it. You're not lazy, you're smart. I'm smart, but I do it the smart, lazy way. <laughs> I just don't like measuring, honestly. I don't like to have to get up, measure, make sure that it is the right number, cut it to size. You know, our cutting tables, most of us don't have anything bigger than a 24 by 36 mat. Some of us only have the 18 by 24 mats. So getting a 68 or 89 or 100 inch uh, border fabric cut to size beforehand, you have to do a lot of folding on this mat and you have to do the math to know the half number. And then you have to remember put the fold at the start and not at the end. So, I mean, Honestly, I think there's way more involved than just what I do. Just sew the pieces together, sew them on, and, and hope for the best. <laughs> I've never had a problem. Okay, here we go. And then I'll hold this whole thing up. It's just finger pressed for now, but um, we'll uh, put those borders together and get those on. And I think I'm just going to sew the pieces together. I'm going to count down how many I need. They are four and a half inch squares. So it should be four. This is four and a half right here. Four and a half, four and a half, four and a half. And if I put white cornerstones on it that are four and a half, then I don't even need to worry about any other um, measurement. And I can just have the whites at the end so that it's not starting exactly at the top. It's starting right here. So there's that. This is what it looks like without the borders now. What the quilt would look like just imagine that there is a square right here that would be a cornerstone no it's fine i got it so there that is without to start i think it came out perfect so do I. Looks amazing. yeah definitely love the rainbow effect i'm glad that i sewed it the way i did so now i'm going to start with a two and a half by four and a half inch piece because again right here is two and a half inches so I'm gonna start with two and a half by four and a half before I start my block and then I'm just gonna put one I'm just gonna do red orange yellow green blue purple the same way that order is in one two three four five six seven eight oops I'm counting all messed up one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen down, and then end with a two and a half by four and a half. So for now, I'm just gonna put this out of the way. We're gonna make some strip units out of our uh, pieces. So I'm gonna need one, two, three, four. I'm going to need eight two and a half by four and a half inch pieces. And I'm just going to cut it from those leftover border pieces. 
Why? Because I can. And those will be my starts and ends. And then I'm going to cut. Um, we'll see how many blocks are left over. If there is four left over, I'll just put a color in each corner. doesn't matter which one, but I'll put one in each corner. All right. So I got most of it. If I wouldn't have overlapped on the top, it would have been all of it. Let's dig through my scraps and get two more two and a half by four and a half from my scraps. Two and a half by four and a half. There we go. There's eight of them, two for each side. And we're going to go 16 for the two sides, and then... Did you try to create a grid ruler? Which creative grid ruler? I've tried lots of creative grid rulers. I own lots of creative grid rulers. I own Omnigrid. I own Quilter Select. I love the Quilter Select. That's my favorite. I own Fiskars on the grip, and yeah, that's what I own. Lots of different kinds of rulers. All right, here we go. I'm going to separate these so that I know the order that I'm going. That way I can just grab one and sew. Come on. I need to do 16 of them. And there's 18 colors here in total, I think. Or 16. I don't remember. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I have fifteen colors. So it'll start with red again at the bottom. And then the next row I'll do orange, blah, 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 on the opposite side. So it'll still be a rainbow. All right, here we go. We're going to start with one of these and a red, and then we'll grab that next red and so on and so forth until I have 16. And then I think the next one down should continue, and then the next side should continue wherever it left off, and then the top should continue where it left off. And my foot pedal went far away from me. Got to refine it. All right, here we go. Doesn't matter which way I press them, so I'm just going to press them all to one side. You might have to stack them all up in front of me. I guess I can do it this way. Next. I'll still need to cut um, some, well, we'll see what it ends with again. I just want them to float is what I really wanted. That's the goal is to make it look like it's floating, kind of like the chevrons are in it, or the flying geese, or whatever you want to call it, the chevrons. And the only thing about batiks is they're skinny, they're skinnier, they're thinner, so they get stuck to each other easier. It's starting to sound like I'm getting low on bobbin already.
already blue. Dark blue. Even darker blue. Any questions or anything? I feel like I'm just talking to myself now with my my color order. Do what? Oh, that's the one that created the thing that I used, right? Yeah. My thigh master. I own a thigh master to help with my hip healing. Bought it at the thrift store. For three dollars. For three dollars. Yep. Because I said, "Hey, Scotty, I think this will help strengthen my hip." <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, it probably will." So I looked up old Suzanne summer videos to make sure that I knew I was using it correctly, <laughs> even though I'm. It's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> So that would be 15. So starting back with red makes it 16. And then the next row starts with the uh, next color red. Because again, I'm going all the way around. So you start to end with red? Yeah. Same exact color? No, the next row is going to have the next red. So, oh. and then I'm going to end it with this. So this will be side A, you know, side one. So, I'm going all the way around the whole quilt. So this will be side one. So let's put this up here so that we can make sure that I'm doing this correctly. The rainbow border going to be on all four sides? Yeah, rainbow all four sides. Oops. I really need to get some more clothespins in here. The middle one, and we'll hang an end one. Okay, for now, we're just hanging it like that. So, this is going to go on this side right here. So, if that's pressed up, that needs to be pressed down. So, that's this side. So, side A. Hold on, let's find a clip. My favorite batting is any batting that's on sale. <laughs> so that's side A. So now, because I don't have my cornerstones cut yet, some four and a half inch squares, um, I'm going to do the next color. It's going to start with this next red. I don't think I'm going to use colors in the corners. I think I'm just going to use white. That way they're like floating. I like that look. So we're going to start with this next red. And that will go across the bottom. And then the next one will go this way, and the next one will go that way. Hopefully, it will turn out looking awesome, which it should because it's awesome already. I don't even need to add more, and it's already awesome. Okay, so across the bottom, we need how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, plus. That makes 11 and that makes 12. We need 12 across the bottom because I'm counting these sashing strips. Here's one block because two, two and a half equal a four and a half. So there's one block and there's a second block. So there's 10 to co combinations because there's five rows and then this makes six or 10, 11, and then that makes 12. And then obviously my start and stop. All right, so now we're on to this one. And I'll probably run out of color. Oh, well, it happens. I cannot control it. But there's four sides, so I shouldn't have more than four reds going all the way around. And if anything, I'll just move on to the next color if I run out of this starting red. How did that happen? I don't know. 
Did I sew two pieces together? How did I only get three of those? Now do I have two of these, but only one of those? I'm out of a color. How did that happen? Because I already did that color, that's why. <laughs> oh, I'm so dumb. <laughs> I'm all freaking out. How do I not have that color? It's already been used. It's sitting right in front of me. Yeah, it didn't make you feel <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I crack myself up. All right, we're on this one, so now we're on this one. Do you plan or visualize quilts all in your head, or do you plan it out on paper or computer? Uh, I usually visualize in my head. I'm a, I don't plan or anything. There are times, though, that I sketch it out on paper because I'm like, is that, I, I think in my head what it's going to look like, and I'm like, is that really going to work? So I'll put it on paper and make sure, and a lot of times it does. There have been quite a few times, though, that it doesn't. But most of the time, I see it in my head. I'm like, oh, you know what? This is a good idea. In my head. And then I come in here, and the reason why I have so, for those that are new to my channel and don't know, I have my own pre-cuts. Like, I make everything from one-inch squares all the way to ten-inch squares in most increment sizes by half-cut pieces by half sizes and then i also make my own jelly roll strips so i have a whole entire bin with thousands because I, I have more than a thousand so i have thousands of jelly roll strips um i make my own layer cakes uh charm packs i have all of it so when i, I get an idea i come in here and i start piecing that idea just from my scraps to see what it looks like and if it looks like something that's really cool, or if it works out the way my mind sees it, then I will show you guys how to make it. That's how videos are made. There are a few instances, though, where I've made something as, a, you know, the sample, and I'm like, ah. Then I try to make it again, and I try to make it again. But each time I do it, none of my idea works out. So that's where my orphan block drawer is technically a design block drawer because I've played around with so many different ideas from my head and the ones that don't work go in that drawer and the ones that work go in that drawer too because obviously I make a ton of scrap blocks prior to making videos. Oh, where am I at? I'm at, I gotta make sure because I'm going for 12. One, two, hours? three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, and then I end right here. This is 12. How many hours a week do you think you uh, cut and go back? How many hours a week? Probably, I don't know, a total of 15 maybe hours a week. All right, now I'm going to end it. Week. Yeah, Some it depends on the more. week. Sometimes there's more. Sometimes, there, sometimes I don't come in here for a whole entire week. From Sunday to Sunday, I have not come in here at all. You know, it just depends on how I feel what I'm doing, the things that I'm up to, and so on and so forth. All right, so we ended with this purple. So next is starting with this purple. So this will be across the bottom. I'm just going to lay it on the floor because that's the easiest. Look at that. It's exactly the size it needs to be. So now this side is actually going to go upward. So I'm going to start with this purple. I'm going to start with my end piece, which is this. And I'm going to do 16, and I'm starting with this purple right here. So I'm going to go to the next purple, then red, and then start the whole thing over again. So this one will end with a purple again. And then that next side will start. Now. Should have enough pieces to do this all the way around. We will see. All right, so going back to starting red, that leaves me with one of everything after I do this. I 
Can I turn the fan mm -hmm. off for this step since we're not ironing it? It shouldn't get too hot in here. Yeah. Because all these last pieces are blowing. We don't want to get them out of order. Who's sleeping on... Oh, Thumper came in here and he's... He likes the ends that we cut off of Gabby's um, wedding dress. <laughs> so he he's been Gabby. laying on them. He loves Gabby. That's his favorite uh, person. He also loves my friend Eric with Treasure Park Creations. Every time he comes, that's the only person he never runs for. He even runs for my own mom or, you know, anybody that comes. Like, he just loves my friend Eric. It's weird. Eric's not even on here to hear about it. Yep. Even though that's not good. Laughing it up. Not being a giant. Oh, yeah, he is a giant compared to Gabby, for sure. I have no idea what number I'm at. You want me to count? Oh. Nine, ten. Oh, I've got to reset that right there. I liked this idea. This is a good idea. 15. I still have to cut some, a four and a half inch strip off the fabric. What am I at? Sixteen. I'm back on the side again. Oh. So sixteen. put my white piece on it and this goes on that other side and I'll hang it up there with it and then all we have to do is make across the top just gonna grab a clip this is the end right here and this is the start right there so I'm just gonna clip those together like that so that'll sit right there and now it ended with this purple so now it's gonna go to this purple first and we're gonna count over 12 and that's how it's gonna end so I'm gonna start by putting my white on the ends and then we're gonna grab the uh, cut a strip off of the background fabric. Oops, it goes that way. So I'm go right here now to the reds. Part of the quilt making process. 
what's my favorite part of the quilt making process? Every part. I love choosing the fabric. I love thinking of a pattern. Uh, well, I can't say I love it. It's just constantly in my head, honestly. <laughs> But I love to go choose the fabric. I like taking Scotty with the choose fabric into the fabric room. He does that a lot with me. Unless it's just an idea in my head, he does not. But if I bring a pattern in and say, hey, you want to help me choose for this? And he'll come choose with me. When it's in my head, it's hard to describe. And so it's hard to choose colors with him. Uh, I like cutting it. I like piecing it. I like making it my own loading it on the long arm and quilting it i did not like laying it on the floor to sandwich it to free motion quilt it that was the only step i hated and that's why i got a long arm because that step just was not me i couldn't do it, it was killing my body Accurate quarter inch seams is to have a seam guide. It's the best tip I give you. Get a seam guide. Oops, right here. I had right shoulder surgery and can't operate the sewing machine. What method would you recommend to make fabric? Um, well, healing from shoulder surgery. Yeah, I would say I, I wouldn't do anything right now. I would wait to heal because at this time, um, I know with my hip, because I just had my hip done, those repetitive motions is just going to re-worsen the problem. You need to do your physical therapy and get that all situated first. Then start. Um, like me, I didn't use my knee lift, and I am a natural at using my knee lift, so I always use the knee lift on my machine, but I couldn't because my right hip was the one that was, you know, fixed. I couldn't put my foot on the foot pedal, so I waited. I just hand sewed in bed. So, I mean, if you want to hand sew in bed or hand quilt in bed, I don't know about picking up a quilt, though, and adjusting it with a, you know, a freshly healing shoulder. Nine, 10, 11, 12. You can cut fabric with the left arm. I mean, you can, yeah. Well, do you think this would make a good black light quilt? Um... Depends on what colors you're using. Neon colors of fabric tend to go under black light better. So it would. Or just quilting it with black light thread. Honestly, I have four pieces left. I think I'm just going to go in the four corners. I should have just thought about that. Oops. Threaded. I should have thought about that the way I ended the colors and started the next. That's okay. I'm just going to use white. I want it to float. Even though the purples are my favorite. <laughs> What's your husband's favorite quilt you've made? I don't know. Ask him. What's Scott's oh, favorite quilt that, that I, I made? To hear your answer. Um, you like your quilt for you, and you liked my, um, uh, Hunter Star. Surprisingly, he did not like the colors at first, but he actually liked the Hunter Star when it was completely done and quilted. He was like, wow, this is cool. I like this. The yellow one, the one that the butter yellow, and you were like, oh. that does not look good. Yeah, you're right. And, and then it turned out amazing you're yeah, like wow favorite i don't I know like your it. favorite is your quilt i like all the quilts you've made yeah. your wolf the one i made for him has a giant wolf panel that's his favorite i can actually get it and show you guys when i'm finished because it's just hanging on the quilt ladder in my room Right at the doorway. One of the few quilts we own that isn't for sale. Yeah, one of the few quilts we own that's not for sale. There's a lot of them. All right, here's across the top. So this will be across the top like this. So now I need my four. I'm going to remember that this is the top. I need to cut real quick a four and a half inch strip of, because I don't have 
four and a half inch. Maybe I do right here. Do I have four and a half inch off these? I might not have to cut into that. Two, three, and four. Let's see if I get a four and a half inch out of these. There is a seam in the middle, but we're just going to pretend that it's not there. <laughs> Finger press it out. Cut four and a half inch square because it should be. That's four and a half right there. So let's cut some four and a half inch squares. There's one. There. Turn it, cut it. There's two. See, this is why I keep all the cutoffs of all my piecing because you can use them towards stuff right away. You don't even have to wait. You can use it in the quilt top itself. You don't even have to use it in the back. And one more. All right, so I'm going to put one of these. I know that I could have used like a six something inch so that I had a nice fluid piece, but I really, like I said, I don't care about seams being at the end. So I'm going to add this to. Are you going to back it and quilt that this week? I could back it and quilt it this week. Just depends. All right, depends on what I am doing through the week. All right, so that goes on this side and this goes on that side. We don't want to get the order mixed around. I'm trying to pay attention to that. Don't need all that. So I literally have from the yardage that was required to make this quilt, this is how much is left. So this is enough to bind the quilt because it's just a lap quilt. So just know that they gave a generous amount. I mean, you saw how much was left of the fat quarters as well. Are you gonna be using leftover fabric for binding? Um, I'm gonna use the, I'm probably going to use the white to bind it. I hate binding in white, but I'm probably gonna do it. All right, this goes this way. So this is the bottom one. I'm putting one of these cornerstones on each side, and then I'm going to sew the sides on, and then the top and bottom. All right. So that's the top and the bottom. I don't know which way to press them yet, but we're going to sew the sides on first. No, I'm going all the way around it. Oh, no, I'm going around with color. It's going in a circular motion. All right, let me.
flip that to it. All right, here we go. Let's move this out of the way. Move that out of the way. Put this side on first, put on the other side, and then put the top and bottom. Should be exactly the same size. No sashing on the outsides? There is sashing all the way around, yes. Yeah, so a white going all the way around. I can go all the way around it again. There's enough to go all the way around it again in white, most likely. So I'm going to sew a little bit. I'm going to line this up all the way down. Yes, please. Now that they're all sewn together and can't fly away on us. Yeah, it gets hot quick in here. What's your favorite fabric to work with? Moda, Fulton Treasures, etc.? Uh, I don't have a favorite brand of fabric um, because I'm really not picky. I like everything. So brand-wise, the only ones I'm picky about, I hate, absolutely cannot stand country classics from Joanne. Sorry, Joanne's, if one of you that works there is watching. Country classics is the worst brand of fabric ever imaginable. It's like buying just the most cheapest fabric possible. I absolutely do not like it. Um, that's the only brand that I will re refuse to use. Unless I have some scraps of it somewhere, I don't like it. I started not liking it in the beginning when I found that there was such a place as Joann's and Scott and I would drive to Bullhead, which is far away, to go buy at Joann's. Yeah, that's my own personal opinion. I cannot stand that brand. I don't like the way it sews, feels, any of it. Other than that, I like all brands. I like all fabric manufacturing brands. I like Walmart fabric. I like Moda fabric. I like, you know, Free Spirit fabric. I like it all. I like, you know, Benertex. I like Robert Kaufman. You name it, I like it all. Huh? Eric's favorite? Benertex. Yeah, right? Wasn't it? Eric's favorite. Brand? Yeah. I don't know what his favorite brand the is. What kind of fabric he likes? He buys it for you. It's Tula or whatever. Oh, that's a designer. Oh. Sorry. I'm off then. <laughs> I'm off then. Yeah, that's the designer. Brand is the company that makes the fabric. The actual brand of something. I cannot feel that piece there. I'm trying to hold it so it stays level. My foot pedal decided to run away on me. This is why people clip or pin, I mean, but obviously I don't pin, so I just, you know, stick myself back a little bit. And <laughs> Make sure that it's lining up. Okay, so I have the other one just laying the way it's supposed to be sewn. I'm just going to go like this. Because I have to sew it from this direction. Go to this side of it. Sew it on. And just know I won't hold it up until it's completely done. <laughs> All right, I'll sew this side on.
I'm still working on the side. It's starting to sound low. The bobbin is starting to sound low, but that's what I was saying. Let's go to this end. I'm going to nest this lovely seam right here. Because I have a lot of seams for right here at the end. But you know what? I don't care. <laughs> Yes, I get exhausted. My whole entire back is on fire, killing me. Absolutely need to get up and move around. My hip is killing me, but I'm going to finish because I like to push through when I'm this close. I definitely don't, you know, I can't quit just because it hurts. Okay, so now this would have been the. T I sewed this at the bottom, so this would have been the top. Yep, because that's my color thing. So my top piece is. Hold on, I think I gotta look at this. It ends with the purple. No. That wasn't my top. Oh, now I gotta remember. That was the top. Hold on, I gotta look at it. it. Ended with that purple, so the darkest purple is going here. And then that side lands with the blue. So this one goes up here. We're gonna make sure real quick though by putting some, come on, sorry, I'm trying to nest these seams right here. Do you have a backing picked out yet? No, I don't have a backing picked out. And it probably won't even go with this quilt. It'll probably be some random fabric that I have just lying around. Sorry, I'm putting this on here to make sure that my colors are ending. That's why I need to clip it on here. So I'm pretty sure it ended with this one on the top, but we're going to see right now. Let's go to the bottom. A couple need more clips because I don't want it to get all funky when I go to flip it. So that means that was the bottom one. Yeah, because this goes right here with this red. Yep, so this one goes on this side, and that goes with that purple is next. Perfect. All right, so I'm just going to finger press that out. Lay this one on here. This should be exactly the same size. Pressing that out, pressing that in. People have asked before why I don't put the borders, um, the smaller piece on the bottom in case this fabric stretches compared to the border itself. Sometimes I do. So if it's not laying completely flat and they're not meeting up and I know that I want my feed dogs to suck this fabric in more than the top, then I will put the border on the bottom. But 90% of the time I put it on the top and it's easier for me to just keep everything lined up, I guess, having it on the top, if that makes any sense to anybody. But I've gotten asked that before in questions. Um, why do I always put the smaller piece on top and not the stretchable fabric on the bottom? Oh, I just do it that way. I don't know. I'm not... I don't know. I just, that's the way I do things. I'm weird. I do things differently. I'm also going to make sure that all of these seams are staying down as I sew. Oh, 
Oh, I just rolled it over. If I stained my white, oh well. <laughs> I rolled my chair over it. Oops. You gotta be careful when you're doing white quilts, white on the background, because dragging it around on the floor, getting it on your desk around your machine because of the oils and the greases and all that. Um, especially under your chair rollers because those are really filthy. Definitely take more chances of staining the white fabric than you do any other color. Also, when you wash quilts like this that have really dark batiks but white background, it's best to use color catchers. Uh, batiks are definitely rinsed a lot more than you think though in their process um, when they're dyed so that no color runs before it goes to their you know facility to sell it to you um i'm air sewing i knew i heard it run out but i wasn't paying attention hmm? this kit i don't know where it came from the pattern is Always Chasing Rainbows by Benertex. It's a free pattern. It just explanation pattern, and you click on it, and it gets the pattern. The kit itself came from Colorama Triple Dyed Batiks 2 from So Interesting. That's where the kit came from. Kits like this just show up in the mail, and I'm like, okay, I'll use it. So, wow, I really sewed a long way. That goes in there. I heard it. I should have paid attention when I said I heard that it was running out. Uh, Country Classics. That's the brand I don't like at Joann's. Just doesn't feel right. It doesn't sew right. Shreds like crazy and every single color in it is very see-through. All right, now for this side. Can you get that iron prepped and ready? All right, this is the final side, and then I'm going to step away and press the whole entire thing and hold it up because it is almost done.
Okay, I'm gonna step away and then you'll see the whole quilt nicely flat and beautiful. Clean up my little scraps while I'm right here. <laughs> All right. Yeah, the kitty cat is asleep. It's out it's like a light. Ooh, this is so purdy. So purdy. I'm teasing you guys away from the camera. So purdy. I love rainbow anything. This is great. Make sure all these seams are going the way I made sure they were going. Scott's going to show you guys the cat. So the camera is going to move right now. Whoa. Oh, well, You're that's. scared the cat away by dropping the chair on her. He's laying on the leftovers of uh, Gabby's wedding dress. He went to sleep so Daddy woke him up by dropping the chair on him. Oh. Didn't actually hit him. He's fine. That is Thumper. Yep, Thumper is just being lazy over there. Rice bag when your back hurts? No, but can you put the camera back now? Yes. No, I don't use rice bags or anything like that. When my back hurts, sometimes I'll use a heating pad or ice, but 90% of the time I just deal with it or Scott will rub it for me. That's true, I rub my back a lot. Yeah, he rubs my back for me if I ask him to. Sometimes I don't even ask him and he'll just come over and rub my back. Okay. My ironing board is 26 by something, <laughs> by 64 or 65, something like that. It's quite big. So I can do whole entire lap quilts like this in just a couple passes. Right now, I'm just trying to make sure that all these seams are going towards the dark prints. And I'm also pressing my... Um, rest of the quilt as best as possible at this point. Not really doing a perfectionist job. It's probably going to be super sloppy. <gasps> I'll always press it better before it goes to the long arm. It gets a good, um, I wet it and s steam it <clears throat> before I long arm quilt usually. Hey, you guys do remember what it looked like prior to these borders. These borders are really striking. This is the last side, I think. <laughs> last side. Okay, just a little bit of pressing right here. Okay, 
ready to hold this up with me. Okay, I'm going to back the camera up so that way you guys can see this more in full as much as possible. I'm going to try to hold it up some. All right. Here's a side for you. And here's a side for me. All done. Finally, you got to back yourself up all the way. There you go. I can't tell if it's in the camera or not. So you can see the color goes all the way around it. Let's lift it up a little in the bottom section. There we go. So they could see the color goes all the way around. So it ends with the red and then it continues with the red and then it ends with the purple onto the next purple and goes all the way around. Here, you can go back that way some. There you go. Yep. Mm. All right, there it is. Always chasing rainbows. Done. The done, done, done. The done, done, done. I love it. And my size, because I added on it, is. We're going to measure it real quick, adding the border the way I did. Uh, 60 and a half by 6, 7, by 78. So 60 and a half by 78, and that's off probably by a half inch that way, but there we go, done. And I still have scraps in here to do whatever I wish with on the back with them or make something separate. There's some half square triangles left in here. There's some white fabric that I'm going to use towards the binding of this quilt, and... Yeah, that's it. Totally fun and easy. And look at that. We ended it on time. I turned this into three videos and it worked out perfect. All right. Show the what? The wolf. Oh, yeah, the wolf quilt. All right. Yeah, you guys want to see Scotty's quilt? I'm going to fold this for now and All right, let me bring the camera back again so you guys can see Scotty's quilt since I did say I was going to show y'all. No. Oh, I didn't say any price. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that. I don't price quilts until they're fully finished, and I know all the work and effort and stuff that I got into them. So here is Scotty's quilt. It's not one wolf. It's two. It's two wolves. I also quilted our last name and the word love on it. On it there. It's covered in thread, but that dust. is his, it's covered in dust and thread, yes. <laughs> and the back is all Marine Corps fabric. So I bordered out Marine Corps fabric for him. Wow, this thing is really covered in thread. It's been hanging on a quilt ladder for a while. Look at all that big pile down there. You see that, Scotty? That big pile of thread. Yeah, Let's turn it back to the front one more time. 
Yeah, so I made this for him a long time ago. It was really hard to make him a quilt when he is always on in the house. <laughs> it wasn't that bad then because we had the daycare, so I was doing the daycare. But yeah, my friend babysat Scott out of the way by making sure he wouldn't come out in the garage when I was quilting it. And then if he had to pass through the garage, I would put a sheet over the whole entire quilt on the long arm. I'd cover the whole long arm so that he couldn't take a sneak peek of what I was making him. But, yeah, I made him that. All righty, guys. Any questions before I skedaddle off of here? It's so pretty. All right, guys. Well, I want to thank everybody for hanging out today. What a wonderful Sunday. We finished a quilt top. So don't forget to download the free pattern by Benertex. Always chasing rainbows. Super fun. It took the last three videos. I After the video is done, I'll put the links to the other ones in the description of this video. So that way you guys can find the other videos on part one, two, and this is part three. So next week, I don't know what we're doing. But stay tuned. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Good night. Bye. 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 Ooh, la, la, la.